We're on St Bees Island, it's off the coast of Queensland, Australia. And we're here to do some koala research. In the 1920s, a handful of koalas came out to the island and they've flourished since then. There's probably about two or three hundred koalas on the island here. And it's a, kind of a unique habitat for them, unencumbered by humans, so there's no cars, no dogs, no housing. It's really pristine koala habitat. We chose St. Bees Island to do koala research because we have a collaborator, Dr. Bill Ellis, who's been working on this island for over a decade now. I and mean, it's a unique situation in the fact that you know, there's no human impact on the koalas and it enables us to collect data on what the normal situation would be. And we can use that to compare back to the koalas at San Diego Zoo and help out their health. We came here because we had heard there were koalas on this site. And when we got here, we realised we had an opportunity to look at a population that wasn't uh, suffering from the effects of urbanisation and development. That here we had a population where the koalas seemed to be sort of in balance with their environment. Koalas are in a bit of strife in eastern Australia, um, particularly the coastal populations. We know that from monitoring they've gone downhill rapidly in southeast Queensland. The main threats to koala populations in the wilds is, is humans and all the impacts that they have. So clearing of land for housing development, clearing of land for mining or agriculture or forestry projects. And then there's things like dogs and, you know, unfortunately koalas don't know how to cross the road when the cars are coming and all those things have a, have a huge impact. Our main aim is to learn a lot more about koalas that we can hopefully implement in the future and San Diego Zoo Global is trying to take a leadership role uh, in terms of koala conservation. With us having the largest koala population at the zoo outside of Australia, we feel it's important for us to make a contribution to koala conservation. And hopefully the work that we're doing here at St Bees will do that. <coughs> we'll get a great camera shot. Dr Bill Ellis is putting collars on the koalas so he can track them. There's various ways that we catch koalas but usually it's just using extendable poles and we just put a plastic bag on the end and rustle that above the koala's head. Uh, just enough to frustrate them and annoy them and they start descending the tree. And then once they're safely under anaesthesia we'll go ahead and do our sampling. So there'll be things like blood collection, ultrasound, scent gland samples and we also take a small skin sample for DNA purposes. You know, this is an important project for me. I feel like it's a, a great way for me to contribute back to Australian conservation. Having grown up in this country and, and uh, being able to enjoy the wildlife, uh, it's really a great opportunity for me through San Diego Zoo Global to be able to contribute back. I think people can really, they sort of really empathise with the koala. It's an animal that it's really easy for us to feel empathy with. And I've, I've always thought that if we can't save those animals, then we really can't save anything. It's like, you know, sort of the ultimate test case. What we need to do to save it, I don't think is, is that major. And yet, it appeals to virtually everybody. So you'd think everyone could make a small sacrifice if that's what you need to make. So I really think it's, it's one of those key animals that will prove to us whether we can or can't, in the end, save ourselves. <laughs>